uh, Kohei and, and obviously he spoke to us just about not being able to control or feeling that control um, early on defensively, especially in the field, it looked like things were just not comfortable and things weren't clicking the way you guys would hope um, what was going on early. And, you know, obviously credit to the guys to be able to fight back, but um, what was going on early in, in the game, just especially defensively? Um, oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, kind of, when you're standing around, I guess, on defense and it's cold out there, it's, it's really tough to kind of find any rhythm. Um, and that's, that's something that they kind of go hand in hand when, you know, the pitchers are attacking the zone and getting, you know, contact early. Um, it keeps everybody, especially in cold weather, like on their toes and their body kind of loose and fresh and, and warm. Um, when you're not and you're kind of standing around while, obviously, that first inning we had, you know, we were out there a long time and, and with no real action. It was just, you know, a lot of walks and a homer. Um, but after that, it's – um, it's difficult. It's difficult to stop the bleeding, obviously, and that, that, that's why it's, it's so important to, to kind of, you know, we, we preach that heavily, not just on the pitching side to get outs, but, you know, obviously keep everybody engaged and, you know, keep our defense uh, kind of flowing at the same time. I'm good. That's it. Thanks. Hey, Evan. Hey, it seemed like – you there? Um, it seemed like they eliminated his splitter and his changeup pretty early. Um, do you have any concern that that they that they were able to recognize it, or that maybe he was tipping anything? Potentially, I mean, it's something I'm going to look into, and, and we're going to look into. We thought maybe they were getting him from second base. Um, you know, outsides they were staying real close to second base, and those are things that like I expect teams to do. If if, if you know, and I don't know if if Kohei and, and Japan if they were heavy on doing that. Um, you know, because he does try to hide it with his glove. But, you know, they were standing real close to second base, kind of peeking in to see if they could see inside the glove. And if they were getting anything from a split or, you know, a slider grip, that makes it easier to kind of relay and it allows the hitter. Because they they had they took some pretty close pitches that I thought, you know, they, they knew they were coming. Um, I'm always <laughs> conspiracy theorist on that. And I'm always wondering if they can see it, especially when they're having good at-bats against them. Um, but overall, he just, you know, Koei obviously didn't have – you know, good command really today. I think the cold weather kind of was a factor for him, um, different for him, uh, something that he hasn't really, I guess, dealt with a whole lot. So um, it's one of those things. But we'll definitely look into to see if there's something that, that we saw from second base or that they're getting out of hand or, or however they're getting it because um, the takes were a little odd to me. Okay. Um, and, yeah, the the other thing is, is I don't want to make – excuses or anything but the weather was an issue for him I, it, it seems like yeah no I mean it's it's it's, it's going to be for everybody I think it's in, until you I think it, as a whole team it affected us you know we're a Texas team that hasn't played in any cold weather and that's uh, these guys have been playing in it for a month and so it's it's something that you know as, as a ball player you're going to have to deal with at times and you know none of our hitters were they were they were all kind of stiff and cold and um, you could tell the pitchers, it looked like the Gus kind of was running the same issue. Some of the sliders were kind of slipping out of his hand. Um, it's just something, you know, you're going to have to deal with the elements at times. And, uh, unfortunately, that kind of, I think, hurt us a lot today. Thanks, Woody. Kennedy. Hey, Woody. I was, I was curious, what was making Michael Kopech so effective, you know, through those five innings he pitched? Muted. I Muted. Uh, Matt, we're muted. Somebody muted me. Okay. Um, uh, Kopak is nasty. Like, he's got good stuff. Um, he's, he's got a really, really good arm. Uh, you know, the upper 90s fastball, I can, you know, break down part of that, but it's, you know, he's got a really good slider. Uh, the fastball is, is elite. Um, not only the velo, but just the, the, the characteristics of it, the, the velo, the, the vertical on it is, you know, it's a pretty elite pitch. And today, obviously, he was, I would say, effectively wild in the zone. You know, a lot of the pitches he was set up away and missed in, um, but what was thrown to the edges, even though he wasn't, I think he was kind of trying to throw down the middle and, you know, hit, hit both corners sometimes um, unintentionally. And that's, uh, that's when you have stuff like that, you know, especially when he tries to pitch at the top of the zone. And I felt like he was pretty effective at that today. So, you know, from a stuff standpoint, there's not too many guys that have better stuff. It's a little bit like uh, glass now in that regard, especially the, the, the fastball. So it's tough. And it's cold weather. It's, it's tough to get on top of that. And um, He was obviously really effective. And also, I think Kiner's had at least one hit in every game since he broke in 0 for 19 
you know, setback. What do you think is, you know, just been going well for him this last six, six you know, I think he's just staying with, with what he does well. And that's, you know, I, I don't think Kinder's ever going to run into to too long of, of slumps at times because he's got such good hand eye and such good bat to ball. Um, he's constantly putting the ball in play. And I think when, you know, when he gets a couple line drives to fall, I think he was hitting balls hard in that stretch at times and was getting out. And so now you're starting to see like those line drives are falling. Um, he's just hitting line drives all over the field. And that's kind of what I expect. That's what he expects. Um, depending on what pitch it is, he's always in the bat. It um, doesn't matter how hard you throw or how high you throw. Honestly, he'll, he'll, he'll give himself a chance. So um, I think he's, it's confidence too at the same time. I think he just, you know, he got a couple of hits. He kind of took a deep breath and said, okay, a little sigh of relief and said, I can still hit, um, you know, as a hitter sometimes. I mean, Pete Rose said it, you know, he, I don't know if I'm ever going to get another hit. Wade Boggs did the same thing. And these guys are Hall of Famers. Like you never know when you're going to get your next hit. So I think for Kiner, it's, uh, it was probably more confidence related. All right. Thanks, Woody. Okay, we'll take this last five and try to keep it moving because it is getaway day. We'll go to Chris. Hey, buddy. Um, just kind of curious um, about the the mix-ups between Kopik and Collins early, and usually umpires don't don't help out the catcher there. What were you seeing from from that point? As far as like just that, there were some obvious mix-ups between the two of them, where he was expecting one pitch and another pitch was coming, and usually umpires that the catcher's got to reach back over real quick. They don't usually generally give that strike, and it seemed like. Brennan's strike zone was a little inconsistent early on. Yeah, I mean, was, we were a little bit frustrated early on. Um, we felt like some of the calls that we got against us weren't the same, but that's baseball. Um, you know, I think some of those were were obviously strikes. The, the mix-ups, they were, they were in the strike zone. It's, you know, I think that may be more old school than back in the day. They wouldn't ever give it to you. You know, if you were set up away and you missed in, they never gave it to you. I think umpires now are trained to, you know, call a strike a strike. Um, they take a lot of pride in that. And I know they, they preach that with the younger umpires um, that are coming up. So, I, you know, I, I didn't really have a dispute with the ones that were, were missed. They, they were right calls. I felt like some of the other ones I was, I was kind of debating <laughs> the ones that actually hit the spot. Um, they were a little bit off the plate. Uh, and I mean, obviously, it, you know, there were only 20 some odd games into the season, so it's still a small sample size, but at what point do the strikeouts from your lineup become a concern? Um. I think they're always a concern. I think this is something we talk about a lot. So I think we're partly still in the process uh, from an individual standpoint, each guy, you know, still identifying and defining what their, you know, two strike approach is going to, what their two strike swing, you know, that they can trust is going to be. We have some younger hitters that, you know, are facing elite pitching for the first time that they haven't, haven't had to use that. You know, they had, they had a two strike approach, but obviously at, at some point, the information plus the elite stuff. We face some pretty good pitching, you know, with the Otanis and this guy and this whole staff, obviously they all throw hundred miles an hour. So um, it's being tested. And I think that there's, you know, a lot that goes into, you know, every day their work. Okay. What two strike approach can I use and how is, how is, what's going to be the most effective way for me to, to put the ball and play with two strikes. Uh, it's not that easy to just go up and tap a ball, you know, back to the pitcher. So it, it's going to be a little bit of a growth and learning process for some of these guys, um, but they're trying. They're trying different things. We have Adoles Garcia choking up for the first time in his life. Um, there's there's certain things that are happening that, uh, you know, I got to trust that that will eventually play out and, you know, hopefully we'll cut down our strikeouts. All right. Thanks, buddy. Jeff? Uh, two hitters today. Um, Nick Solak didn't hit a ball out of the infield, uh, but got two hits. Can you talk about what – his hustle in these circumstances might have shown some guys. Um, I don't think it needs to show anybody. I think everybody on our team, you know, runs balls. I think we have probably one of the the hardest base running teams, you know, in the league. I mean, every time Joey hits a ground ball, he runs extremely hard. I think solely that's just, you know, that's what defines solely, man. Like when he's hitting good, he's, you know, he's hitting rockets all over, but when he's not, he still finds a way because he, you know, he doesn't quit, man. The guy has, you know, he's resilient. He just never gives in. Um, and he gets a lot of, you know, some choppers, some hard ground balls, and um, he always feels like he has a chance to beat it out. Uh, Tim Anderson backed up on that ground ball to short and just enough to allow him to beat it out. So I think, you know, Soli never takes a pitch off and he never takes a, a takes a, a ground ball for granted. So I think that's uh, that's what he always does. And then Joe, Joey uh, – 
two hits in back to back games. Has he made an adjustment? Do you see? Uh, did he make any any kind of adjustment at the plate? Um, yeah, I think he's he's always making adjustments, but I think you know the you know looked like he kind of I thought he actually shortened his swing up too much the other day, where it was kind of it wasn't the same you know I wouldn't say violent swing, but the same bat speed. Uh, but I think today was you know tough tough at bat, obviously crochet, you know left on left, tough at bat. Um, stayed in there, battled battled the guy, um, staying more to the middle, I guess, um, on some of those line drives that he's hitting. I think that's a good sign. Um, cause then maybe the post side power will come, you know, if he catches it a little bit out in front, but, um, I don't think it's a major adjustment. I think it's just, uh, you know, staying with it and staying more to the middle of the field. Thanks, Chris. Okay, Chris, I'm sorry. Uh, Alex. And Woody with, um, Arahara, was there a point to maybe bring him into the third inning because of the way the bullpen situation and with the lack of off days upcoming in the next few weeks? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, I was hoping he would go past that. Um, we didn't really have a whole lot of options today. Um, we kind of used them all. So it uh, puts us in a little bit of a bind, obviously, as we move forward. But uh, I was, you know, 70 pitches in two innings. And the way those two innings kind of went, you know, I, I felt like that wasn't it wasn't worth it. And he probably only had about 10 pitches anyways, maybe 15. You know, was it worth it to send him back out there the way things were going? Um, I, I didn't think it was worth, you know, putting him through that. Um, and then somebody's going to have to come in, obviously, in the middle of an inning, most likely. Um, I didn't want to really do that. And then with getting ready for Giolito and then it being scratched for coping, is it more straining on an offense knowing that you have this elite Copic on the mound now and you guys having to prepare in the snap of a finger? Um, yeah, I think either guy is pretty good. <laughs> I think Giolito is uh, pretty good himself. So, you know, I don't think we dodged a bullet, <laughs> you know, avoiding Giolito and having to get Copac. Um, so I, either way, I mean, both guys have really good stuff. They're different, obviously, but uh, both guys are pretty elite. So um, it's going to be a tough challenge regardless. Appreciate it, Woody. Thank you. Okay, Levi. Looking back at the White Sox over the last few years, they, you know, went through probably their worst stretch in 17, 18, kind of came out of it in 19, made the postseason last year, and they look like pretty strong contenders this year. As As you're navigating your team through kind of – maybe a year or two behind them. Do you ever kind of point over and go, here's, here's what you need to be learning from these guys as we're facing them. Is that something that happens or is it more of a individual? Yeah, they remind me a little bit of the, the Astros, you know, before the you know, 14, 15 seasons, um, the, the White Sox. I remember saying this in 19 when we played the White Sox, this team's going to be really good in a couple of years, you know, especially if they add some pieces to their existing core, like they had some, some real talent and you just see their, um, just the development of some of their guys, Moncada, Tim Anderson. Um, these guys are taking huge steps forward. And, uh, you know, it, it resembles a lot of our guys. You know, they're, that, that learning process of becoming a big leaguer, being a consistent big leaguer, and then becoming a winning big leaguer, you know, as a group and as a team, as a, a core unit and learning how to win. Um, you know, it, it definitely is something that I've pointed, you know, out to our guys and, you know, giving them different examples of other teams as well. But this is definitely one of those teams that uh, they're going to be good. <laughs> they got a good squad. Um, and I think as it gets warmer here, their, own, their offense is going to obviously get better. I think we actually got them at a decent time from an offense, from a, you know, for our pitching. Because it's cold. It's, you know, kind of neutralizes them a little bit. Uh, but when it starts getting hot here in Chicago, they're, they're going to they're gonna bang some balls around. Right on. Thank you. Okay, last one from Evan. Quick thing, um, Willie is okay. Yeah, yeah he's good. It, it, it just got him fleshy part of the arm. Yeah, I mean, it just I think caught the back elbow, but he's he's fine. Yeah. Okay, and then the last thing is, um, have you at all thought about or talked with your peak performance guy or anything about? Joey and the ballpark. The ballpark? Our, our, our park? Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I've talked with Joey personally about that. I, I don't, you know, I don't think it's an, it's an issue anymore. I th think early on he was a little bit frustrated because you know, it's bigger. Um, but I don't think, uh, you know, he's obviously taken the, the mindset of this is good for us. It's good for our team. It's good for our offense. Like, you know, with the, he's one of the only guys that, you know, has, you know, 40 home run power. So yeah, he's fine with it. Okay. All right. Thanks, Woody. Okay. I'll wrap up our Zooms for today. Thanks, everybody.